Peggy 3. We're here for another episode of The Boot Room. This week, Darren Cross from Match Magazine is talking through the subject of trying to score from corners. Isn't that right, Darren? Yeah, that's right. Corners give you a really good opportunity to score, and we're going to look at the different ways you can do that. Now, it can be a bit hectic in that box when you're scoring a corner, so what's your first tip for improving your chances? Yeah, one of the things I really like to do is to go for a quick corner, um, which basically involves swinging the ball in as soon as the corner is awarded, uh, and then switching the player very quickly with left bumper, uh, moving in front of the defender and getting on the end of it. And what that does is it doesn't give your opponent any chance to sort of set themselves you know or to look at what's happening and think about their own positioning the corners just straight into the box before they've had a chance to do any of that so it's really the element of surprise um, that works for you there. Now in terms of selecting the person that takes a corner what tips have you got for, for choosing someone that's right for the job and for the side you're also taking the corner yeah, from? Yeah I mean I like to hit in swinging corners um, so if the corner is from the right I'll use a left footed player if it's from the left I'll use a right footed player um, I'll then aim that for sort of the edge of the, the six yard box and then uh, look to whip it in with plenty of power. Again, then it's about selecting somebody quickly, getting in front of the defender and getting on the end of the ball. And, and I find that to be really effective. The in-swinging corner is, is very difficult to defend. And what do you find so attractive about the in-swinging corner? What is it for you? It's really um, the pressure that it puts the, the defence under because that ball's coming in, you know, they, they've got to do something with it. Otherwise, it's, there's a chance it could fall to one of my strikers. So if you can get to the ball before them, then uh, there's a really good opportunity there to, to test the goalkeeper. And you should hopefully then have enough players in the box um, to pick up on a rebound rather than an outswinger, which is going to curve away from goal. Um, there's just a bit more of a chance that you're going to pick up a rebound with an in-swinger. So in terms of the ball swinging in the air, obviously if you're a right-footed player and you kick the ball, it's going to swing to the left, as you explained. But there are other ways to add more curl to the ball than also in terms of the, the height and, and power, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. You can you can use the left stick um, to affect the curl uh, even more, make it swing in even sharper. And you do that by powering up your corner and then holding the left stick you know, towards goal, either diagonally or directly. Um, and that's going to make the ball um, spin in even more. And then obviously with the power, um, you can choose to in-swing it to the, the front post by not putting too much power on the, on the corner, maybe sort of a bar and a half or two bars, three bars will take it even further into the goal and so on and so forth. So it's really up to you. There's a lot of variables there, but you just want to try and find the best way um, that works for you. And uh, for me, that's to aim for the edge of the six yard box and try and get someone on the end of it. Now tell us about overhitting corners, because it sounds like something you wouldn't want to do, but you use it to your advantage. Yeah, when, when I'm playing an opponent that I don't know at all, so, so just somebody random online, um, I'll always overhit the first corner. And the reason for that is that um, often an opponent rushes his goalkeeper out um, the first time that you take a corner. And if you've overhit it, there's a really good chance that it's going to go straight over his head and, and leave you with a chance to sort of nod into the empty goal. So for the first corner or two, I'll, I'll always do that just to see what he does. Do you ever play corners along the ground, just pass it into the box or bring a second man in? Yeah, sometimes I'll bring a second man in and there are a couple of reasons why I'll do that. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll want to keep the ball and, and play into the box. You know, Maybe I'll take the marker on and dribble and look to make something happen that way. Or if it's late game and I'm winning, I'll give him the ball just to keep hold of it. You know, What I don't want to do is whip that ball into the box, have the keeper claim it and then hit me with a fast counter while all my players are pushed up. So it's a good way to keep the ball and you know retain possession if you're 1-0 you're up with just seconds to go. Finally, Darren, there is actually a bit of a secret weapon when it comes to corners, isn't there? Yeah, I really like to create my own corners um, and I do this in the create a set piece menu. And uh, what this allows you to do is to really precisely choose um, how many players you want in the box, where they run and uh, basically how they move. So there's a lot more control for you um, and it just removes a, a bit of the sort of random aspect of a corner. So you know exactly where players are going to be and you can use that to your advantage. It's, it's a really nice way to score. So how do you go about creating these set pieces? Well, it's something that you can access uh, when you're in the arena just by pressing the back button and selecting it on the menu. But there is actually quite a lot to the process. So I think it's something we should look at in a bit more detail next time. Good idea. We'll look at that next week. So bring a notepad. We'll see you then on The Boot Room.